engineer. I'm JR. Uh, today, I want to tell you guys the truth about LS Swap. I actually wanted to put together a list that kind of answers the most common questions. I've done a bunch of individual videos, but they're old and people don't go back and read them, and I get it. So here's me last year, if you guys remember the Junkyard Jewel. Uh, this is a 6 liter LK4 my wife and I pulled out of the Junkyard that uh, went on to make like 370 horsepower. And you see there that I'm doing the if it spins it wins test on it. And that's how I like to pull them because I don't have room for a donor vehicle. You know, but if you do have room for a donor vehicle, my Facebook's littered with crappy Silverados and Sierras and Tahoes with bad transmissions and busted frames and crashed into a pole and everything else. This one here, 600 bucks. You can get everything you need almost for the swap and, and make some money back. Like that bed looks pretty okay. The hood's worth something. There's a ton of them out there. So if you get a donor and take everything, take the harness, take the whole engine. When people ask me what engine to buy, should I get a six liter or four point eight or get a complete engine because you're gonna if you don't get the coil packs and you don't get the accessories, you're gonna even if you don't use the stuff, if you need it, you're gonna wind up paying a ton through the junkyard. And that brings me up to the next point, which is if it spins, it wins, which is legitimate. Like if you can crank it over, if you can turn it over with a breaker bar, there's nothing wrong with it that you can't pay for a few dollars. Even Jewel had a bad pistol. They're on eBay for 30 bucks. A buddy gave me one from a tarp under his yard. Bearings, I didn't do anything while I was at it. Nothing, no rear main seal, no front main seal, no, no nothing. Uh, harness. Is the next point in the list this is a cnch it was 268 dollars shipped from china um mine worked fine some other people have told me they've had a couple wires switched around pinned out wrong i, I guess if you want to get one you should probably be a little bit first in harnesses work any more factory harness as is you don't have to thin anything you just pin you power pins a9 and b11 and uh it'll run like that. You, you can use that whole harness completely separate from your car harness and there's really no need to thin it if you don't want to. Um, the next point is the harness again and the PCM tuning. You know, everybody wants to justify why they need a Holly and I, I know that you just really need one and you don't. You just don't. I, I know that you're the next Street Outlaw star, but you're not, and you just don't. If you're doing a cam and header swap, you don't need a Holly. A harness and a PCM are not the same price as a Holly, even if you are an idiot who buys the first thing you see on Google every time. Um, like I just showed you, you can use the harness as is stock out of the vehicle for, you know, it comes with the engine. Um, you can have one reworked for anywhere from 200 to 250 bucks. You can buy the CNCH. There's options out there. And as far as PCM tuning, you can do that for free with tools like Tuner Pro, um, PCM Hammer, LS Droid. I have all the videos. I'll link them all down below. The knowledge is out there. HP tuners, if you need data login and stuff like that, it's only $300 for the hardware now plus two credits that are another hundred dollars and you only need to buy them one time you don't have to relicense it every time you want to make a change or anything like that so that's not a thing either um the next point is the transmission that's kind of a thing that people stumble over a lot the easiest thing to use with an ls is going to be the factory gm transmission a 4l60e that came behind a ls or a 4L80E. With the 4L80E, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's a 93, it doesn't matter if it came behind a 6.5 diesel or a 7.4 or an 8.1, a 350, doesn't matter with the 4, with the 4L, 4L80. Um, with the 4L60, it's easiest to just use one that came behind an LS, which is gonna be, you know, from 98, 99 on. Um, you can use the adapter and the spacer to do it, like with the older ones. If you have a 700R4 and you have a drive-by wire LS engine, it's not going to work out. It's, you, there's no way to make it work. You can do a constant valve body, constant pressure valve body. Um, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks. It's just not very easy to do. If you have drive-by cable, you can do a bow tie overdrive bracket for about 200 bucks so that you can keep the TV cable. But again, it's just easier to use the, the factory transmissions. Um, 
when it comes to flex plates, that's what really matters. When, when we're talking about factory electronic transmissions, all you need is the flex plate that goes with it. 80Es have a flat flex plate. 60s have a dish flex plate. It, it doesn't matter what the engine size is. Every what engine, what flex plate do I need for a 4.8 to it? Doesn't matter. You need the flex plate that goes with the transmission. Um, you can use your stock turbo 350 400 power glide if you want with a crank spacer and a converter spacer with a dish flex, flex plate. They bolt together. It's not a big deal. Um, as far as adapting like Ford and Dodge, like a 727 or a C6, just get that right out of your head right now. Just use the equivalent Chevy Auto. Um, there's a lot of manual transmission options out there. You're going to pay a lot of money for them. The LS engines will bolt to any small block Chevy Bell, so it doesn't matter if it's like a T10, SM460, 5, SM420, M21, NV3500. They bolt up. It matches the bell housing pattern matches. You just need the right clutch and a flywheel. Um, if you're hung up on a T56, you have to get one from a LS engine. If you get an LT T56, it's really expensive to convert it over. Um, and they're not, they don't shift that great and they kind of have crappy ratios and I don't really like them. But a lot of people aren't hung up on them. You can use a T5 if you have, again, the right combination of parts. There's some research that you have to do. It's a little complicated, and of course, T5s aren't the greatest transmission in the world, but you can do it. Budget transmissions that don't cost a billion dollars are the AR5 and the CD09. Everybody gravitates into NV4500. I don't know why. It like first gear is low. I don't like it. It's a truck transmission. It shifts like a truck transmission. It's not that great. Um. The Solstice in Colorado had the AR5, and it shifts pretty good, I think. It has ratios that are pretty decent, and you can get them for a couple hundred bucks. Uh, the Nissan CD009, I don't like the ratios, but some people do, and, and there's adapters out there to make that happen as well. The next point brings me to the next point, which is drive shafts. There are mounts out there if you do just the right amount of stuff, with, and you're swapping a Chevy. Um, you can use the stock drive shaft because you keep with a one inch setback mount you're going to keep the engine in the same spot and the transmission is going to stay in the same spot so you can use your dri stock drive shaft if you're going to launch on slicks or you're going to run it at high speed there's a million videos out there I got this one from uh, Fuel Injection Sucks it's on Matt Happel's dyno but there's a bunch of videos out there of LS swap cars spitting out drive shafts on the dyno they were never meant to go the kind of speeds, you know, seven, 8,000 RPM that they're going now. And they tend to just wad up. I paid $330 for my drive shaft. Um, the junkyard didn't provide it. It's got 1350 yokes on both ends. It's beef. And I'm never going to have to worry about it turning my truck into a pogo stick. So in my opinion, buying a drive shaft is the way to go. When it comes to fuel systems, if you're swapping a factory EFI car or truck, you're already in business. You just swap the pump to a pump that'll supply 60 PSI at the volume you need and go. So if you want like a Delco, if you want a factory pump, the Delco EP381 is from the Vortec Silverado trucks. Um, and that meets the specs. Personally, I use the Chemso 340 liter an hour pumps. There's Bosch pumps, there's Walbro pumps, there's all kinds of pumps, it doesn't matter. If you have a vehicle with a carb, see if maybe, like if you have some 70s, 80s shit box, see, you know, from the Malays era, see if uh, there's a later version of that that has a factory EFI that'll bolt in. Like for instance, my truck's a 79, but in 87 they got EFI. So I have an 87 tank and it has a basket in my opinion, having a basket for the pump to sit in like the factory EFI tanks have is absolutely critical. Like you're going to, with the sheer volume of fuel that they move, it's going to come on, uncovered on hard acceleration, hard cornering. It's going to stall, stumble. People have lost engines over it. It just, it doesn't seem worthwhile to me. Um, if there's no factory EFI solution, tanks ain't sells a sender that's meant to be adapted into carb tanks. It has a basket and a return line and everything. Um, when it comes to the rails, it really doesn't matter if they're returnless or not. 
Everything up to 02 was return, everything 03 in truck engines, which is the bulk of what people are going to swap. Everything from 03 on is returnless. I personally like return rails because the regulator works with boost. It's boost referenced, so you don't have to buy another regulator and mess with that. Some people like return less because they only have to run one line forward. You're still going to run two lines back at the filter. Where I, I saw one guy did a swap with the Corvette filter and put it all the way on his firewall, so he ran two lines all the way back anyway. Um, if you use a returnless rail, you can use a Corvette, a C6 Corvette filter, and that has a regulator and a return right on it. So you have a line in a, and then two lines out, and one of them goes back to the tank. Injectors, the stock ones are 24 pounds-ish. The earlier ones are a little bit less like 22 or something it doesn't really matter um it is is close enough to say that they're all the same from 4.8 to 6.0 on all the trucks unless we're talking about flex injectors flex injectors are 31 pounds 8.1 injectors i believe are 28 pounds um you can reference the injector video i did and figure that out swapping to one of the other injectors is a good idea if you're going to do a cam or nitrous um, the stock ones are pretty well maxed out as is. If you're doing a power adder, there's no way you're going to use the stock injectors at all. You can, however, cut the caps off the stock injectors and get about 75-ish pounds of fuel. Um, Snake Eater Performance sells injectors that are all the way up to 210 pounds. They're, they're imports and they're good quality. He tests them, he stands by them. They're absolutely great injectors. Um, I have a set of 100 pounders myself. Actually, I have two. I'm buying them two at a time. I'm working my way up to it because I'm poor. But uh, I, I have no problem with recommending these import injectors from Snake Eater. Uh, next up, cooling system. I've always used the stock radiator on every swap that I've done. They all are sufficient. I know that people have this idea in their head that there's more llama thrust and all those llamas thrust in makes more heat and whatever. Not the case. I'm running the stock 250 radiator in Daryl and uh, I've been running that truck around. It's been 85, 90, 95 degrees. It's not overheating. It's fine. Any modern fan that's electric will move more than enough. They all move 1500, 2000 CFM. Any modern electric fan from anything, the Taurus fans, the Mark 8 fans, Mercury Villager fans, um, Dodge Intrepid fans, those are the popular ones because they're large in size. And I don't even remember what mine's from anymore. Um, but And you need a rig, uh, relay, and then I use the PCM to trigger it, and that's my whole cooling system. Mounts, I skipped this because I forgot, and whatever, that's the way it is. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, though. There's templates online that you can actually just print out a piece of paper and put it on some 3.8 steel and cut it out with a grinder if you want to go absolutely, absolutely budget. Um, drill your holes with a drill press or a hand drill and, you know, weld them up. Um, if you're swapping a Chevy the popular mounts that bolt to clamshells if you get a one inch setback that's what they're advertised as that will put the ls engine in the stock small block position so it will bolt right to your stock transmission everything falls in the exact same spacing there are other companies out there that sell like multiple holes and multiple options um there's some that slide forward and backwards uh, when I'm doing like an off-brand swap, like the F-150 that I swapped, I used the bushing and plate style. And I just made a plate, welded it to the frame with the little bushing, um, like this here. This style works well if you're doing an off-brand swap. If I ever LS swap my Dodge, that's probably how I'll do it. Um, sometimes if you have like a C4 Corvette or C3 Corvette where, where everything hits everything, you know, a quarter of an inch can really make a difference, and that's where the sliders and that, that style come in at. On accessories, uh, the things that you need to know are that you'll see car and truck spacing referred to, and that's the distance out from the engine that the water pump pulley sticks. So how far forward it protrudes, which it attributes to the overall length. Like we have a guy in the Facebook group, LS Swapping a Chevette, 
he doesn't have any room. He probably wants car spacing. Um, again, C3, C4 Corvettes, really tight applications. You would want the car spacing. You're going to pay a lot more for the accessories for car spacing unless you start out with a car engine. Um, so when you're looking at brackets for like LS Simple, Dirty Dingo, ICT Billet, they all make whatever you need to do if you want to put your stock AC compressor back on. Um, if you want to high mount the LS AC compressor, if you want to just have power steering pump, whatever you want to do, they all make plenty of stuff to move stuff around. And all you really need to know is what spacing you're using. Um, I'll try to link as much of this stuff below as I can. Hopefully this helps you guys out and answers the bulk of the common questions that people have. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to join the Facebook group and post up and, you know, somebody will be along to help you. Probably not me, maybe. But uh, this is a pretty long video. It's kind of a hard subject to sum up in just a few short uh, words, unfortunately. I'll have this document available, too, and I'll keep adding to it as I go. Um, or I'll have it up publicly where other people can add to it as they go. I thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this helps you out on your swap. Hopefully it leads to awesome burnouts like this one. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Driveway Engineer.